Uh, World War II is, is a game about World War II air combat. It, it really focuses on the air combat and the dogfighting. Uh, we go into some detail of, about uh, the aces who flew there and the planes that they flew and the different types of missions. I think one of the things that makes World War II most exciting is the planes had to get really close to each other. Modern air combat is done with a lot of missiles and radar and avionics and weapon systems. And in World War II, you had machine guns and pilots and little gun sights. So you had to do it right, not a lot of tolerance for error. We have about 20, 24 people working on the game. The bulk of them are graphic artists and engineers, but we also have uh, composers, musicians, uh, people who design individual scenarios, war buffs, people who are writing content for the game, people who have uh, worked with some of our uh, content advisors to, to try to make the game realistic and, and pull together really the focus of the experience of combat. Details like uh, when you put out your flaps uh, on your plane, you're getting ready to land, or if you're in combat, you put out your flaps to gain some more maneuverability, some more lift. We, we illustrate that in the plane. You see the flaps open, you see the detail inside of the flaps. Uh, if you get hit, pieces of your aircraft will fall off and you'll see uh, wires, supports, cables, struts hanging out of the broken parts of your aircraft. Um, you crash land your plane in the ground, the propeller blades bend over. Uh, as, as they get bent against the ground. When you're firing your guns, if, if you've seen this in, in movies, the casings from the machine guns are just pouring out of the gun ports. It, it isn't any one thing, uh, it's just a collection that makes the game just unbelievably realistic. It's, it's, it's really a gem to watch. We have a 3D cockpit, and what that means is you can look around in the cockpit at the different instruments. Um, you can look behind you, you see the structure of your plane around you. Traditionally, that's been done with a fairly simple kind of 3D bathtub, I guess. Um, <clears throat> when you look around that, the instruments, are, they're kind of schematic. And usually games, traditionally games have had either 2D, which is kind of like a painting. It's a, a flat plate in front of you and all the instruments are readable and legible. Or you have the 3D where they're not really legible anymore, but they're schematic and it gives you an idea of which way your head is looking. In our game, the instruments, there's only one panel. It's a 3D panel. It's a 3D model of the actual airplane. The instruments are in the right location. They're legible. You can look down at them or you can look up. They're there all the time. It's much the way it is in a real airplane. Of course, we don't have the actual airplane there, but it gives you the same feel uh, and when you're flying around and you're watching people go past you. You want to be able to, to gain an artificial horizon or altimeter. You want to be able to see it there. So there it is. It does a lot to set the tone for the rest of the game. We, we take the game very seriously. It's not, it's not an arcade game. Uh, it's, it's easy to get into because the, the activity is fairly simple. But it's a serious game, and the, the music ties into that. The emotional tone of the product is, is very well integrated with the music, and the music's changing to reflect the situation. When a bad guy comes on, the computer knows it, so it's picking a score that's kind of tickling you a little bit, going, hey, something's going on. You might want to look around. And uh, the experienced players will go, oh, the music's changed. I'd better look around. And you start looking around behind you to find out where the bad guys are, and all of a sudden you see them, and if you're lucky, uh, you go into combat. Jane's is an information service. Uh, they're over 100 years old. Uh, Fred T. Jane uh, was uh, an advisor or collector of information. He put together a compendium of, of data, first on ships and then tanks and aircraft and, and everything. But they're uh, on the world's standard, I guess, uh, defense contracting uh, information source. Uh, they, they collect information and details about everything that's in production and that you're likely to see uh, in the opposing battlefields. Then they have a uniform collection of information about each one of those things so that you can go to that reference work and find out who it is that's facing you on the battlefield. Um, we, we were able to, to uh, work with them and collect that information and get it 
delivered to us in a form that we could put into our games and make sure that we had kind of one reference standard so that all of our games would be of the same accuracy. We wouldn't have planes flying too fast, machine guns that they don't have, weapons that are unbelievable, um, situations in the world that, that just don't make sense. Well, primarily it's, it's a uniform level of, of quality. Um, a lot of games take dramatic liberties with, with the vehicles that are in the game, laser guided, whatever, uh, just things that, that don't make sense. Uh, they might have vehicles mismatched in combat or the capabilities of my star aircraft grossly overestimated. And what we're trying to do in a lot of games is simulate how this equipment is used by modern forces or historical forces and try to give the people not only the educational benefit but uh, the benefit of, of having a realistic situation that we're simulating and so that that realism is the heart of, of what James brings to us. The game's a blast to play. <laughs> Air combat is, is one of the things that I think is the most fun. Uh, when you get into World War II combat, you're away from the weapon systems and the complexity of modern radar and avionics and missiles and missile engagement envelopes. You're into, can I find the guy? Can I get my guns on him? And can I pull the trigger? Do I have enough ammunition left? Can I outfly him? Uh, I think it's the most fun thing to do. I would say young adults to old adults, uh, anyone who's interested in aviation. Uh, some of the advisors we have are in their 70s and just loving the game. And it takes place uh, over the skies over Europe. Uh, and uh, the battle that we are um, showing off is the Battle of the Ardennes. This is back in the day where um, it was just usually guns on guns and dogfighting. And actually, it was um, the first person who saw the enemy usually won. <laughs> and so again, that's, that's what we're, we're showing off in this product. It's uh, see the enemy, and then, you, you, and then see the enemy, and you'll, you'll, you'll defeat him, hopefully, before <laughs> he sees you. We have different um, uh, levels of, of, of fog and, and haziness and, and cloud heights and we have three-dimensional clouds as well where uh, the player actually can uh, fly behind and, and get obscured. Um, so uh, either to take advantage uh, of his opponent or, uh, or, or basically uh, escape. Um, so they can use weather um, to their advantage. Um, I think what sets us apart from the other uh, manufacturers are um, some, some of the stunning graphics. I mean, the player, uh, first off, you, you, you install the game and, and you're presented with a, a museum interface. And so you kind of walk, it feels like you're walking around a museum and you can walk around to the different kiosks. Uh, one of the, the kiosks you walk to are the historical information about the war you fought. Um, another one is uh, if you want to look at um, some of the targets in, uh, in World War II, you can look at some of that stuff. Uh, there's another part of the museum where it shows a, a detailed hangar. Uh, those show all the different planes that you can fly in the, in the product. First-hand accounts of uh, actual World War II aces that um, um, have flown these aircraft. And they'll talk about each of the aircraft um, that we portray in the product as well. Uh, some of their um, strengths, some of their weaknesses, um, and also some of their uh, first-hand accounts of, of what, what happened to them when they were flying these aircraft. We were assigned to the 8th Air Force, and we were the first P-51 Mustang unit in the 8th Air Force. We were the second one in Europe, but the first one in uh, in the uh, Eighth Air Force, and being in the Eighth Air Force, our mission was to uh, escort the heavy bombers wherever they went in Europe on uh, bombing raids and things like that. I, st I see him and he's, he's streaming coolant, and I said, I, 
hot dog. I got him, you know, uh, I got a golden BB in his vital parts, uh, probably coolant streaming. And he just uh, merely pulled up like this and bailed out right there in front of me. And uh, the German pilots did that quite often because they, uh, they were short pilots, they had a lot of airplanes, they're over their own territory, so, you know, they're going to bail out real quick and, uh, and uh, fight another day. So I'm, uh, I'm real thrilled about all this, and all of a sudden another Mustang pulls up on my wing like this, and, and uh, he looks over at me and he goes like that. And uh, I, it, was, it was a pilot from a different squadron, so we're, uh, I, I, I knew that that was a lucky shot if I'd, uh, if I'd have knocked that airplane down. And I got to wonder, and I said, I wondered if uh, Johnny England was the name of the pilot and this other Mustang had flown up and shot that thing out from under me. Hey, you know, that wouldn't be very sportsmanlike, but uh, after, all, after all, there is a war on, and uh, it doesn't matter how you get them, I guess. But uh, anyway, I, I thought about this on the way home. We still had about an hour to get back to England, and, and uh, you know, what am I going to do? Am I going to claim a victory, or am I going to... I guess I need to talk to Johnny England about it first, and, and what do I say? Do I... <laughs> you know, am I, am I mad at him, or, <laughs> or if he did shoot him out, what the heck do I say? So I'm thinking about this on the way home, land, go in, make my uh, intelligence report, and tell him I'd like to claim a victory, but to, for him to hold it until I uh, did a little checking. And so I go over to the officers' club, uh, is where usually you'd meet the pilots after uh, the other pilots after the, a mission. And I'm walking in the club, and I'm trying to wonder now how am I going to how am I going to confront him with this? And and I walk in the club, and there he is, right there at the bar, and he spots me, and he and uh, he comes running over to me, and he says, "Andy," he says, "that was the greatest shot I've ever seen in the world. You hit that guy out there about 60 degree angles." And I says, "Oh yeah, well you know Johnny, lucky shot." <laughs> so. We had mid-air collisions in the weather. Uh, I had one with another flight, with two flights of four. We collided somewhere here and lost two, two wingmen. Uh, we had guys that uh, got in weather and got disoriented and, um, and due to lack of training. Uh, were not good instrument pilots that didn't come home. The worst way, I always got, I got home back to our home base, always brought my guys back to the base, all except one time. The weather was so bad that uh, I gave them the option of, uh, you know, not following me and going up and bailing out if they wanted to. It was, it was that bad. The weather was absolutely socked in. And I got down to 100 feet in the soup. We had, I hadn't seen anything, you know. Uh, lower, 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 and finally it gets a little dark and I could see features. And then I get right on the deck and now I'm flying there. Well, I thought, okay, I got it made to some extent. And then all of a sudden, here's, a, here's two B-17s are coming here and I pull up over one and go into the other. And the poor guys are, uh, it, it, was, it was pretty dangerous. Uh, lots of times the uh, enemy air, the German airplanes would dive into an overcast and uh, to get away from us. Uh, Electronic Arts sends me uh, the latest build in a little CD, a couple of CDs, and I load it and and I f fly it and uh, I write up a little report or I tell them, hey, this is, uh, you know, this is uh, not realistic. Um, it might look cool, but it's not realistic. <laughs> or uh, say, hey, this is a gross error. you got to fix it. So well, when I first uh, first looked at uh, P-51, the image on the, on the airplane, when you put the landing gear down, they, uh, the, the, this, this gets kind of technical, the, the landing gear doors were open. And uh, the way a P-51 works, 
when say your gear is up and you put the gear down, the doors open, the gear comes out, goes down, and then the doors close up real streamlined. And so they have them flying around with the gear, the gear doors down. And uh, I brought that to their attention and they fixed it. And it uh, I wanted to just say one little thing, uh, kind of a, you know, uh, it's kind of about computer games and war games and things like this, you know, it's uh, uh, the way I look at it. I hope all the wars in the future are, are cyber wars. I mean, that uh, all the aces in the future are teenagers and they all survive. Yeah, one of the things we were able to do that was fun that makes the game much more realistic is the use of light and the gun barrels on the planes as light sources when they fire the uh, explosions as light sources it's it's something that's just now possible in in video games for the PC so it was really fun to be able to do that the um, especially at night when you shoot the guns one of the effects we're really proud of is how you can damage the other player's plane. It's not as nice when it happens to you, but um, that you can get holes in your wings, you can get pieces of your tail blown off so you can see through the back of your tail. Uh, we have a pretty elaborate damage texture system so that if your fuselage gets hit, you have a damaged fuselage, but your wings aren't hurt and so on, and you can, you can break off different pieces of the plane and damage different pieces of the plane separately and it's pretty realistic looking at its final effect. So this is a wireframe model of a plane from World War II fighters and this is what we start with. We use reference to build this wireframe and then we take the texture map we've created and apply that to the skin and then if I render it for you this is what it looks like. And that's a shape from the game as it appears in the game.
flight. Cleared for takeoff. Over. Crash. Good luck. Number two went down. He hit the silk. <laughs> 